In this video, we're going to discuss genomics and complex diseases. And in particular, we're going to discuss something called a riskogram. And a riskogram is just a way of portraying the information. So unlike the sickle cell disease that we discussed in the last video, um, the diseases we're going to discuss now are affected by more than one SNP. And this is actually true of most common diseases. Um, and sometimes many SNPs are known to be involved. So uh, the SNP itself does not cause the condition when present, uh, but it can influence uh, someone, a, a particular person's susceptibility to a certain disease. So now we're going to look at an example. And for an example, we're going to use arachnophobia. And arachnophobia is simply uh, fear of spiders. OK. And so right now I'm going to draw the riskogram and just show you what it looks like. Down here, we're just going to create an, ax an axis. And um, we'll label it. So we'll start at 0%. And uh, we'll go to 5%, 10%. And then this squiggly line means that you know there's a, a break here. And then we get to 100% eventually. But we're not really worrying about this part of the axis. Um, and over here, on our vertical axis, we're going to talk about something called prevalence. And then a SNP. We'll call it SNP1. So the prevalence of arachnophobia uh, in, in the general population happens to be about 25%. So the prevalence of arachnophobia in the general population happens to be about 5%. So that means that uh, in, in the population that we're talking about, uh, if, you, if you take 100 people, on average, five of them will be afraid of spiders. Now, if that person that we're looking at in the general population has SNP1, well, it turns out that their chances are actually higher of having arachnophobia. And another thing that we need to pay attention to is called the likelihood ratio. Uh, and for SNP1, the likelihood ratio, uh, now this is just a hypothetical example, but we're going to make it 2. OK. And so what the likelihood ratio tells you uh, is that for every two people that have arachnophobia, I'm just going to abbreviate within an A, there is one person that doesn't have it in this population that we're talking about. OK, so maybe we're talking about everyone in the United States. So in that particular population, for every one person, and, and so in, in general for the United States, 5% of people um, are afraid of spiders. But if we look at a, a smaller population, right, so now, for example, um, Maybe this is the United States. And now we're looking at a smaller population contained in the United States. And this one is SNP1. So if we look at all the people with SNP1, it turns out that for every two that have arachnophobia, there's a one person that doesn't have arachnophobia. Therefore, um, if you have SNP1, you are more likely to have arachnophobia than if you did not have SNP1. And that's what the 2 to 1 ratio tells us. Now, how do we get from this likelihood ratio of 2, and 2, as we see over here, it really just means 2 to 1. The 1 is implied. So how do we get from a likelihood ratio of 2 to the 9.52%? Well, it involved a little bit of a conversion. So I'm going to walk us through that now. So we started out with 5% prevalence. Now, that's a percent, and 5% is also equal to 5 over 100, and 5 over 100 is equal to 1 20th, just reduces. 
But if we want to convert that into a ratio, then we can do well, what happens is, um, so 5% means that 5 people have arachnophobia out of 100 people. And so that means out of 20 people, one person has arachnophobia. Okay, so now if we convert it to a ratio, 1 has it, has a arachnophobia. For every 19 that don't. Okay, and so how do we get 19? Well, if one person out of 20 has it, then that means the rest don't have it. So the rest in this case is 19 because 20 minus 1 is 19. And this ratio is set up the same way as our likelihood ratio, where it's the, the ratio of people that have arachnophobia to those that do not have arachnophobia. So 1 to 19. And 1 to 19, if we reduce that, um, it ends up being 0 0.0526 to 1. So I simply divided by 19 here. And I divided that by 19. And that's how I got to there, 0 0.0526 to 1. OK, well, that's great. But we're still not to that 9.52%. So what we need to do now is we need to take this ratio and we're going to multiply it by the likelihood ratio. So this is our prevalence, and now we're going to take into account SNP1. So we have 0 0.0526. We're going to multiply that by the likelihood ratio, which is 2. So prevalence, we'll just call this prevalence ratio. Um, and then over here, we've got likelihood ratio. And when we multiply those together, we get 0 0.1052. And you might be saying, Neil, we're still not to 9.5%. How do we get there? Well, you have to remember, we are still in this ratio format. I put all the ratio formats in yellow. So we're still in a ratio format, but this is clearly um, a percent. And so what we need to do is we need to somehow convert it back to a percent. So let's do that now. So to get it back to a percent, what we want to look at is the fraction of people that have it, which would be 0 0.1052 out of everyone. And in this case, everyone is 0 .05, 0 0.1052 plus 1. And the reason for that is that if we go back to our likelihood ratio up here, where we had 1 to 19, which is 0 0.05 to 1, right? we had that uh, 2, 1 part, colon 1. Um, and that, that, was, that was what made it our ratio. So these are both still ratios here, which means that this part right here is, is really still 0.1 to 1. So this reads as you know, 0 0.1 have it to one person that doesn't have it. Okay. So now down here, we've got um, 0 0.1 have it over have plus don't have. And have plus don't have is just the total. OK, and so that's exactly what we want. Just like up here, we did 5 have it over the total. OK, and so when we do the math out, it turns out that this number right here is going to be 0 0.0952. And that is 9.52%. Now, to do a quick check of our work, um, we started with the likelihood ratio that was 2 to 1. So just looking at people with SNP1, there are twice as many people with arachnophobia as people without. So clearly, SNP1 increases a person's risk for this spider fear. And if we look at our our answer that we just got here in the blue, uh, about 9%, that, that makes sense because 9% is higher than the 5% that we started with. So by having SNP1, uh, these people have an increased risk for spider fear. But what if there's another SNP involved? So maybe we have SNP2. Well, what happens then? And we're going to examine that question in the next video.